Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mitch. The other day I did a video where I showed how to install Arch Linux the manual way. Today I'm going to show how to install Arch Linux using the relatively new Arch installer, which is probably about a year and a half old, but it's really good. So let's get to it. I booted into the March 1st ISO of Arch Linux in a virtual machine and I'm using Vert Manager. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it larger so it's easier to see. And of course, this step you don't have to do. It's something you can skip. So I'm going to type in set font here dash 132 N. I'm going to hit enter. And how's that, eh? That's a lot better, easier to read. Now all you have to do is type in arch install. But you have to type it right. Hit enter. It's just going to take a second to load up and we'll move on. So you can use your arrow keys to move up and down. So on the first one, it's English. I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to move to the second one. And the second one, I'm going to also leave it. The keyboard layout is US. That I'm fine with that. Now, Mirror Region. Now, in my manual video of installing Arch Linux, I showed how to download in the TTY, how to download all the mirrors for Arch Linux. And there was over 900 of them. And how to choose several mirrors to be your default mirrors and how to download from them. Now you can do that here as well. And you would have to do it before logging on to this page. You can do that, but I'm gonna skip that step because I'm trying to show an easy way to install Arch Linux and to make it easy for someone who's not used to the TTY or the terminal. And uh, so I'm just trying to do it the easy way. So. This gives you the option not of choosing specific mirrors, but of choosing the region. And that's why they call it mirror region. So I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to scan down to Canada. And I'm going to click on my space bar and put the asterisk by Canada. And then I'm going to press enter. So now you can see if you move up here, the mirror region is Canada. So it's going to do the downloading from Canada. So like I said, it doesn't allow you to choose the specific mirror, but it does allow you to pick mirrors from the country where you live. So now I'm going to use my arrow keys to go down. And the locale language is English US. I could leave it there, but I'm going to change it to Canada. So I'm going to just hit my uh, slash and do uh EN and use my arrow keys to pick Canada, English Canada. And now I'm going to go down and I'm going to select my drives. So I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to click on my uh, space bar and put an asterisk there. This is a 40 gig drive that I created in my virtual machine. And I'm going to hit enter. Disk layout. I'm going to use my arrow keys to go down to wipe all selected drives and use best effort default partition layout. Hit enter. Then I'm going to use my arrows and I'm going to do ext4. You can pick whichever one you want. I always go with ext4. And would you like a separate partition for home? I always say no, but you can say yes if you want. Disk encrypt encryption. I'm going to encrypt a disk. So it's asking me for encryption password. So I'm going to click it on. I'm going to put in a password. Hit enter. It's telling me it's a weak password, but this is just for my video, so I don't need a strong password. I'm going to re-enter it. And that's done. Now I'm going to pick partitions. And I'm going to click this on. Put an asterisk there. And I'm going to go out. So it's Encrypting one partition. Now 
now I'm going to go back. And as you can see, if you move up here, disk encryption, partition encryption. It's telling you that we've encrypted a partition. And uh, I'm going to go down and I'm going to leave it set at grub install. Swap is by default is set to true, but I don't like using a swap a file or partition. So I'm going to put this to no. And I'm going to hit enter. Now the host name is default. Did at Arch Linux. I'm going to change that to Arch Installer. Now you don't have to worry about the host name because the host name is not set in stone. You can always change the host name after installation anytime you want to do so. Now I'm going to set the root password. I'm going to type in my password. It's telling me it's weak, but I don't care. I'm going to retype it. And now it's going to ask me for a user account. Now, normally when I'm doing my manual install, I always do a user account after the fact. After I've done my installation, I boot into root and do it. But considering that this installer is for people who want to just do an easy, quick install or for people who are new to Linux and don't know how to do things in the TTY, I'm going to let it do the user account for me, which I normally don't do. I always do it myself. So I'm going to click on hit enter. I'm going to add a user. Username is going to be Mensch. Password for Mensch is going to be that. It's telling me it's weak, but I don't care. I'm going to re-enter it. Now, should Mensch be a super user, sudo? So I'm going to say yes, because I want Mensch to have sudo privileges or administrative rights. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to hit enter. So it's telling me that the username is Mensch. That's my password. And then sudo is true. So now I'm going to use my arrow keys and go down. I'm going to confirm and exit. Now it's asking me for profile. So I'm going to click on profile. And it's telling me that the first item there is. Now, if you want, you can go to the second item and do a, a basic minimal install. I'm going to do a desktop install. So I'm going to click it on and it's telling me we can pick awesome window manager. There's a bunch of window managers in here like BSP, WN, Budgie, Cinnamon is a desktop environment, Deepin, Enlighten, Gnome, i3, KDE, LXQT, Mate is a desktop environment, Qtile is a window manager, and XFCE4 is a desktop environment. So when I do my manual installs, after it's installed and I'm in root and I make myself a user, then I always install. And if you watch my manual install, you would know this, or if you've been watching other videos, you would know this. I always have Qtile window manager installed, the cinnamon desktop installed and awesome window manager installed. But today I'm just going to install cinnamon. And I think this only allows you to install one. I don't think you're allowed to pick more than one, but that's okay because you can pick one after the fact, after your installation is complete, you can go and install any one of these. Go into the terminal and just type in those words and install them from the Pac-Man package manager. So anyways, I'm going to pick cinnamon. Let's click it on. And it's going to asking me to select graphics. I'm just going to say uh, open source. You know what? I'm going to say all open source default. Now it's asking me for audio. I'm going to pick pulse because I always use pulse. Now for the kernel, the default is set at the uh, stable kernel. But I always pick the long-term support kernel. So I'm going to click enter. I'm going to use my space bar to take the asterisk out of there. My arrows are going to go down. I'm going to use my space bar to click on Linux LTS. Then I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, it's chosen the Linux LTS kernel. Additional packages. At this point, you could type in some packages. So 
in this particular install, it's going to install the Cinnamon desktop environment, but it's not going to install a web browser or anything else. You can install all those after the fact, or you can install a few of them now. So I'm going to install a few things now. I'm going to install Git. I'm going to install Vim. And I'm going to install Firefox. And I'm going to hit Enter. It's verifying that those packages are actually in the repository, and it is, of course. And you can see we have Git, Vim, and Firefox. Now I'm going to do network configuration, and I'm going to click on this one. I like to use Network Manager. And time zone, you can leave it at UTC, which is universal time, but I'm going to change it to Eastern. So I'm just going to hit this and do Canada. Use my arrows to go to Canada Eastern. So now I have my time zone set to Canada Eastern. Automatic time sync is set by default to true. I'm going to leave it there. Now additional repositories. You can add some extra repositories to the package manager, but I usually leave this blank. Save configuration. I don't use that and install. So I'm going to hit install. I'm going to click it again. And this is going to take about five to 10 minutes. And I'm just going to pause the video and I'm going to come back when the install is finished. I'm back. The installation took about 11 and a half minutes, which is not bad. And it's asking us if we want to show root into the system or reboot. So I always say no. I don't at this point in with the automated installer, I don't need to shroud into the system. So I'm going to click on no. And I'm going to hit enter. So it's saying the installation completed it without any errors. You may now reboot. So I'm going to type in reboot. And enter. And it's going to boot fast, so I'm not going to pause the video. And I'm going to make this large screen again because this is a virtual machine. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm using Vert Manager. So I apologize for the small screen. At this point, I don't know how to make the font larger. So it looks like this. It's asking me for a passphrase. And it looks like this because we encrypted the drive. And encrypting the drive is makes your system much more secure and makes it harder for someone to hack into it with a live thumb drive. So I'm going to put my password in. I'm going to hit enter. And it's opening up the drive. It's just going to take a moment. And now we're at our login manager. This is LightDM. It's actually called a display manager. I don't know why. I really think login manager really describes what it is. And as you can see, it has my name up here, Mitch. And before I log in, let's just click on this. And we see we have the Cinnamon desktop. So I'm going to type in my password. And I'm going to log in. And we're logging into the Cinnamon desktop. Now the resolution is off because this is a virtual machine. So I'm just going to type in display. And I'm going to change this to uh, what should I change it to? Let's do 1360 by 768. I'm going to apply it and I'm going to keep the configuration and I'm going to close this window. So this is the cinnamon desktop by default in Arch. It's ugly. And of course you can make it look really beautiful. And I've in previous videos in my older videos and several of them, I showed you how to, how I like to configure the cinnamon desktop make it look really nice you can easily change the wallpaper you can uh, theme it and 
change the colors and just make it look really nice. The way it is right now, it's really ugly. It looks like something from the 1990s. So if you want to watch some of my older videos on how to theme it, and I should put something in the notes so it'll be easy to find those videos. Now let's just see. Um, this is our terminal. Of course, you can change that. Uh, this is Firefox. It's just going to take a second to open. And that's Firefox. Let's open it again. And there we have it. So that is the Arch installer. Let's see if I have sudo privileges. Let's do. Let's see if there's any updates to do. Sudo. Oh, let's install something. I'm going to install HTOP. Sudo Pacman S HTOP. Put my password in. Oh, it's, oh, HTOP is already installed. Okay, I don't need to do it. Anyways, we know that my sudo privileges are working. And uh, let's close that. I didn't know I had HTOP. Let's go to HTOP. And I gave it four processors. I gave it four gigs of RAM. We're using almost 600 gigs of, sorry, we're using almost 600 megabytes of RAM. That is the easy way to install Arch Linux using their automated installer. Now, of course, I didn't theme the Cinnamon desktop the way I normally would because I wanted to keep the video short. And I didn't download my GitLab repository and download all and install all the programs I normally install. You can do that. You can watch my manual install and learn how to do that. And you can watch some of my other videos about how I installed the Cinnamon desktop. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. I am the Linux Mensch.